we're gonna go over whether strength coaches should be having their athletes train to failure or not to failure, and we're gonna start right now. So oftentimes as strength coaches, we love to push our athletes to failure, myself included. I think there's a couple different reasons here, okay? One, we like to push athletes to failure because uh, we believe that there's going to be a better training response. There's going to be more muscular gains. You're gonna have that athlete dealing with the burn, right? And I do think there is some mental aspect around that. As a coach, you're like, all right, I want this kid to learn how to be comfortable with being uncomfortable, right? So we're trying to push these athletes as hard as possible. I also think there's an aspect of, you know, this was a hard workout. This workout was super challenging. So when we push to failure, it makes it even harder. Again, this is all like personal anecdotes that I also do as a coach from time to time, more frequently probably even than that. But I think something that we've seen in recent research is that if we compare in the specific case of leg-based exercise, if one leg trains to failure versus another leg that doesn't train to failure except for on the last set, the leg that trains to failure on only the last set can actually get more reps done in that setting. Okay, so then we have to shift backwards and think, okay, what's the goal of the training session? What's the goal of where we're at with coaching these individuals are we trying to get more reps more quality reps and in turn that will lead to greater mechanical tension or are we trying to get uh, a little bit more of a metabolic response or you know anything along those lines and i think that when we can dial in and understand what we're trying to get out of that session we might start to see things differently. So let's start to look at this specific paper from Pedrosa, combination of training to failure and non-failure, an unexplored approach. Unexplored approach of number of reps, rate of perceived exertion, time under tension, volume and load, and muscle swelling in trained individuals. And so what they ended up doing here is they actually had 14 different athletes or 14 different adults, right? And they're actually looking at preacher curls. Okay, so this is freaking awesome. I love that they're just like, let's go preach a curl. Get on that Scott bench and start hammering out these curls. Let's go. And one of the things that they're looking at is, okay, if we do four sets to failure, okay, versus three sets without failing, and then the fourth set goes to failure, what happens in those two areas or in those two settings? So this is a pretty cool paper, pretty simple thing that we're gonna be looking at, the RPE, the time under tension, muscle swelling, uh, and ultimately number of repetitions is really, really important. So we're gonna look at this, we're gonna break it down, and then we're gonna see how we can apply this as strength coaches moving forward. So the way that they started this off, day one, day two, they wanted to familiarize themselves with the actual test. They're doing a range of motion of zero to 130 degrees. They're gonna do a warm up, and then six attempts to reach the one rep max with three minutes rest between attempts okay then day two so about 48 hours goes by they'd warm up they go six attempts to reach that one rm that's three minutes still uh, between those rest attempts then what they end up doing day three day four okay they're going to do all of their sets to failure okay so they have a biceps ultrasound uh, they have a warm-up, they have four sets to failure, then they are looking at that biceps ultrasound to see muscle swelling. Okay, they can see a couple different factors there. So they're gonna be counting the reps, they're gonna be thinking about, you know, what was your perceived exertion, and then what's that muscle swelling look like? Day four, they're gonna come back, they're gonna do that again, but they're gonna do, instead of all of those sets to failure, they're only gonna do that last set to failure, and then they're gonna compare. Okay, they're gonna look at the biceps ultrasound, they're gonna do the warm-up, they're gonna do three sets with a mean repetition, so let's say, you know, we'll look into this a little bit more, but let's say it's 12 reps, okay? And then they'll do the last set, that last set to failure, and then they're gonna do a biceps ultrasound. So some of the stuff that we've got to remember is what are they looking at? Okay, they're looking at rate of perceived exertion. Okay, look at the title, rate of perceived exertion, number of reps. Okay, that's a time under tension, the volume load and muscle swelling. And so what's interesting here is that when we're seeing that rate of perceived exertion, it was higher on the day that they were training every single set to failure. Okay, so every single set to failure definitely had a higher rate of perceived exertion. Now, let's jump on this right away. Does that necessarily mean it's the best workout or it's the absolute best for the athlete? No, not at all, but this coincides with the thought process that strength coaches have when they have an athlete fail, they want them to think like, wow, that, that was a very hard workout. So they leave the gym and they want to come back because it's a hard workout. They associate difficulty and challenging workouts, you know, with big time gains, which is good. That's a positive. Now, when they're looking at training to failure, 
on every set versus train to failure on just the last set. When you train to failure on just the last set, we see a larger amount of repetitions, okay? So the athlete is able to get more reps when they only fail on the last set, okay? So that's a big thought process or a big concept that we have to go under or understand and then recognize that if they're getting more repetitions, their time under tension is going to be longer and the volume load is going to be longer. Okay, so there's three aspects that they're looking at that are gonna go in favor of only failing on that last set. Now remember, this is also related specifically to the bicep curl, okay? So we do have to remember that's one aspect there, but it's something that we can use or think through as we move forward. Now, when they looked at muscle swelling, they didn't see a difference between the two groups, okay? Between the two workouts, okay? When they failed every single set versus when they failed just the last set, the muscle swelling was not different. At least it was not statistically significant uh, as far as having a difference. So it's interesting because some of the conclusions that we see here is it comes down to what does this mean? What are we looking for? Okay, so if we're training to just that failure on the last set, TFLS in, in this paper, okay, they're going to have the similar swelling response. And I want to go into something that they mentioned here. They're looking at greater number of reps and volume load values for just failing on that last set while the training to failure on every set exhibited higher RPE. And they do actually say that it has higher time under tension. I want to like look into that a little bit further because I'm not sure that would actually make sense. But anyway, the results indicate that TFLS in the preacher curl, so failing on just the last set in the preacher curl exercise leads to significant muscle swelling and allows for achieving a higher number of repetitions and volume load with lower discomfort compared to that training to failure on every set. And this also suggests that TFLS training on that last set may promote an anabolic stimulus similar to training to failure on every single set in a less catabolic environment. So one thing that we've got to remember is that when there's cell swelling or when there's muscle cell swelling, typically that should signal that there's going to be a greater muscle protein synthesis uh, response. What am I taking away from this? I think there's a couple big factors. I think that one, when we're looking at like big time strength gains, especially with technique, if we're doing cleans or snatches, you know, we should shouldn't be training to failure every single set. We should be doing like doubles and triples. We wanna increase technical proficiency. We wanna increase intramuscular coordination. We wanna improve those aspects. We're not looking to like toughen up our athletes, right? We're not looking for this massive swelling. Now, if we're looking at strength movements, okay? If we're doing like a back squat or a front squat or a single or a bench press or even pull-ups, stuff like that. Is it okay to fail on those exercises? I would say back squat, you only really wanna fail like one out of every 15 to 20 sets. Uh, ideally, you, you would even go longer than that with big failures. I think that you can increase your strength quite a bit just from executing high quality repetitions because the mechanical load, the mechanical tension is so high. So I think that's another aspect is what type of adaptation are we looking for as strength coaches, right? And if we're looking at adaptations with strength related aspects or coordination related aspects or both, right? Like we're, which can be one and the same is that if we're looking at coordination to improve an acceleration, you want to have high quality reps. We can also increase strength without going to failure. Now, I do think there's something to be said for these two aspects. And I think that one thing here is that I've noticed in the realm of sports performance and in the realm of just fitness training or muscular based training, bodybuilding even, there's sort of this like shying away from failing this shying away from like doing burnout sets. And I think if we are strategic with them, we can still reap the benefits of that mental aspect. I think there's a point even when we're looking at, you know, a leg press or, or something like that, or, or even like a, a single leg squat that's body weight. If you can get your athletes to get really, really mentally strong and push really, really well when the burning and the discomfort is just being thrown on them, I think over a long period of time, you're gonna see some really serious gains out of your athletes. So I think that, you know, understanding the type of adaptation that you're looking for as a strength coach is key. And then understanding what type of athlete you're dealing with. Like I, I'm thinking about right now with my 12 year old son and when we have kids in middle school, right? They've never really put a barbell even on their back. So even just putting a barbell on their back can be uncomfortable. So we want them to recognize that that stuff's okay. And there is a point to train to fail failure in these cases because they don't really know where that failure point is. And that can help then later on get more quality reps. And so I think that I would 
listen to this study 100%, I think that moving forward, I would look at this and say, okay, well, even when we're doing like our hypertrophy based work, and if you're inside of Peak Strength, which is our strength training app, and you can head over to peakstrength.app, the Google Play Store or the Apple iOS Store, when we use Peak Strength, we're looking at that, and those hypertrophy movements, those accessory based movements, we will push to failure on like that third set or that fourth set. And I think that you're still able to get really quality reps with that drive, with that focus, with that ability to deal with discomfort. And I think that that's where I would move forward with this. And I still also would just caution, it's still okay. You will still get good gains if you're doing plyometric work throughout the week. You're doing good technical coordination exercises like cleans and snatches throughout the week. You're doing those big time strength movements throughout the week. It's still going to be beneficial to train to failure with bodybuilding type movements. It's going to pay off with any lagging injuries or with any lagging areas that you might have. And I do believe it will pay off mentally, but all in all, I think this study is an absolutely great study from Pedrosa where you can look at this and say, hey, maybe instead of failing four or five sets with our bodybuilding stuff, let's back down to one or two and we're gonna get better quality reps, which in turn will lead to more muscular swelling and that increase in that muscle protein synthesis. So if you guys need help with your programming, head over to peakstrength.app, the Google Play Store or the Apple iOS Store, because remember, freaks, if you want to train some champions, you've always got to cultivate your power. Peace.